Hello students and welcome to the first session of F3 or FA which is the first paper of accountancy in the knowledge level for ACCA degree. Before we start let me introduce myself. I am a CA and ACCA qualified Avanti So. I have secured a rank in APM paper in ACCA, India rank 2nd and worldwide rank 10th and I am going to be guiding you, teaching you along in this journey of FA. Let's begin. So here I have prepared a short PPT for first chapter which is introduction to accounting, right? While I am aware that many of you would have done these concepts in 11th and 12th if you have chosen commerce, a good revision never goes bad, right? So here we are going to see the basics of financial positions, statement of profit and loss, a couple of business entities and how do they operate and uh, be familiarized and revise our concepts for accountancy. Let's give it a start. Now, first of all, what is financial accounting? What do we mean by financial accounting? In simple words, we if we have to define it, financial accounting is the process of recording of summarizing and analyzing all the transactions that happen in a company. Recording is obviously the first book which is the primary book of entry that we call as the journal. Summarizing happens in the form of ledger accounting, trial balance, financial statements and then obviously the investors and stakeholders need to understand how much profit is earned, how much revenue is earned, what are the assets that the company has invested in. For this, we need the profit and loss and balance sheet. If you are not aware of these terms, gross profit, assets and you are new to commerce, there is nothing to worry because I am going to guide you step by step into all of these concepts through F3. Right? So in short, financial accounting can be called as a method of reporting the financial performance in the form of profit and loss account and the financial position in the form of balance sheet of a business. It's not primarily concerned with providing efficient information about the more efficient running of the business. Its main focus is to make investors informed about a historical record about the previous year's financial performance and financial position of the business. Although financial accounts are of prominent interest to the management because management needs to know whether their decisions and their policies have worked out or not, but financial statements are not just for the managers. They are also to satisfy all the information needs of people involved in the business. Involved that is which we call as the stakeholders of the business. Now the important thing we need to understand is Fina financial accounting always provides historical information. It is a past analysis of the performance and position of the business in the financial year, last financial year. So for example, now we will be making the accounts for year 23-24 which have started on 1st of April 23 and ending on 31st of May March 2024. While different countries may adopt different financial years and your exam question may tell you that the financial year is different. Please understand that the balance sheet and profit and loss is always made for the past records and not for the upcoming records. The upcoming records are projections. The financial statements are always for past records, right? Okay. Now you might have heard another term which is management accounting. So what exactly is the difference between financial accounting and management accounting? Now financial accounting as I told you is about financial performance and financial position that is the performance is profit and loss and position is balance sheet. Management accounting is slightly different. Management accounting goes far beyond those who are focused on account users. Right? Management accounting is mainly concerned with two things planning and then controlling the resources of the business. Now what do we mean by resource of, this, of the business? There are many resources like manpower is a resource, capital is a resource, plant and machinery, other non-current as assets are a resource. So how well 
are we managing these resources? How well are we managing the labor force of the business? Are we utilizing the assets to the best of their capacity? Are the areas that the management accounting is going to focus on? Therefore, obviously, they are going to need very updated, highly updated day-to-day -day and detailed information. Also, they need to prepare things for the future. One of the example is budgets. So what exactly is a budget? For example, you get pocket money, right? And in the next month, you have somebody's birthday coming up, a great movie coming up. And let's say you have pocket money of 2000 per month, right? Now you, I don't know if it's less or more for you, but let's assume it is 2000, right? So now you have to plan your, all your expenses in the next month, the birthday gift, the movie ticket within that 2000. So you're going to make a budget. You're going to make a summary of all the expenses that you need and check whether you can manage in 2000 and you will plan how well you can use in 2000 which expenses you can cut down in order to save money to manage that 2000. Similarly, companies make budgets, budgets of the upcoming exam, uh, uh, costs, upcoming expenses, upcoming as in, in the coming month, coming quarter, coming year, etc. right? In order to make sure that their costs are within control and to plan accordingly to keep their costs within control, right? I hope this is clear, yeah? So budgets are, are basically which predict the revenue and expenses for an upcoming period. It is not just an expenses. Like you might have heard the government of India makes a budget. So they are going to collect all the revenue sources which are basically taxes and all the areas which they're going to expend it. Same is the management accounting budget. Management accounting is a system that analyzes the data to provide information on how managers have to act. If for example, managers find out that the labor costs are getting exponentially increased, they need to control the labor costs. Then they're going to make a budget of how much the labor cost they expect in the next period. And thus, they're going to take actions to control the labor cost. This is an example. This applies in all areas of the business. The concern of management accounting is to present accounting information in a way which is most useful to the management, right? Now, one of the main difference that we need to understand between financial accounting and management accounting is that financial accounting is mainly for the investors, customers, suppliers, potential investors, that is outside entities, along with the internal management in the form of profit and loss, balance sheet, cash flows, etc. Whereas management accounting is mainly about the cost of the business. So you might have guessed, right? Management accounting records are never shared with outside entities because costs have to be kept a secret in the company, right? So management accounting records are mainly for the internal users in the company. Perfect. Let's go ahead. Now, the first part is we will need to understand how the first statement of financial accounting works which is the profit and loss account. As I said, you might have been already familiarized with the statement of profit and loss but if you don't know, it consists of main two elements. First is the revenue and second is the expenses of the company, right? So what all includes in the revenue? Basically, revenue is the main source of income for the company. Let's say you are a manufacturer of cars, then the income that you get from cars is your revenue from the sale of goods. Or if you make softwares, then by selling the service, whatever income you get comes in revenue. Now obviously, to uh, earn this revenue, you will need to pay your workers, you will need to uh, maintain your machinery, you will need to uh, transport your goods and services, etc. So naturally, you incur some costs or expenses to earn this revenue. So by making this profit and loss statement, I'm going to understand that how much is my revenue against how much is my cost and the net, am I making a gain or am I making a loss? Goes without saying, if the revenue is more than the expenses, I'm making a gain, also called as net profit. If I'm making expenses more than revenue, I'm making a net loss, right? So revenue is the income generated by the operations of a business, by the main core activity of the business. Tata Motors is into making cars. 
or Britannia is into making biscuits, so on and so forth. Main operations of the business. Expenses are all the costs which are necessary to run the business and to make these goods and services, right? So income is increase in assets or decrease in liabilities that results in increase in equity other than those contributions from holders of equity claims. Now let's take an example for this. What does this mean exactly? Income is increase in assets or decrease in liabilities. Let's take a quick example. I'm going to explain this point in a minute because I'm going to first explain you what are assets and liabilities if you're not familiarized with that. Okay, so for now, we'll just keep it on hold. Right now, what we'll need to understand is income is revenue from the sale of your main goods and services and expenses are all the items which are necessary to earn this revenue, right? Now, I'll share a quick format about profit and loss on your screen right now. Now, you need to understand that this is a summarized format. Okay, so first comes the revenue, which is obviously the main source of income from your sale of goods and services, minus the cost of sales. Cost of sales are basically the production expenses. What do I mean by this? Tata Motors making cars or automobiles, right? So Tata Motors, the main production cost of making a car, all the material used, all the workers doing it, the cost of paint, all the spare parts, all of that will be in the cost of sales. Clear? If you deduct opening inventory, carriage inverts, carriage inverts is the cost needed to transport the raw material into your factory, right? So if you deduct all of this, what you get is the gross profit. The gross profit is the sales or the revenue minus the main cost of production. That is all the cost necessary to bring in the raw material, all the workers necessary to make that car, the raw material cost needed to make that car, overheads, etc. And the addition of that will be the cost of production, right? So now you, we get the cost, uh, gross profit. Deduct from that all the other expenses. Other expenses as in you can't buy Tata Motors ka car directly from the factory. You get it from a customer store, right? So therefore, the cost of marketing that car, distribution of that car, transportation of that car from factory to the store, from store to your home, then all the overage of selling, uh, advertising the car, all of these come in expenses. Along with this, obviously, the expenses of running the administration, selling and distribution, that is electricity, lagegi, rent of the place where you're going to do the marketing, then uh, depreciation on your fixed assets, insurance costs of your building, of your assets, all of these will come in other expenses. What is the difference between cost of sales and other expenses? Please understand, other expenses are all those items which are not related to your production. They are not related to make a car exactly. But these are expenses which are necessary to reach the car to the ultimate customer and thus make that sale. So other expenses are also important, but they are not directly related to making that car, right? Whereas cost of sales are production expenses. They are directly related to making a car, okay? So in this way, when we deduct other expenses from gross profit, what we get is profit for the year, or in other words, the net profit, right? Going on. Now, the next element to check is a statement of financial position, which we also call as the balance sheet. So the first one is an asset. Okay, now many of you would be familiarized with the term asset, okay? What exactly is an asset? An asset, as a definition goes, is a present economic resource, right? A present economic resource controlled by the entity as a result of past events. 
a present economic resource controlled by the entity as a result of past events let's break it down okay a present economic resource what exactly is an economic resource what do we mean by an economic resource okay in simple words an economic resource is anything that is going to help you to make the goods and services that your business is into okay so what do i mean by this <coughs> let's say that you are a cake a baking company cake manufacturing company right so uh, the machine that will help you to grind your batter to mix your batter is obviously necessary for you for the final dough that is going to be made this is an asset which has an economic resource because this is helping you with your goods and services or again to tata motors they have a robot who which is going to paint the outside cars uh, uh, outside of the car or which is going to assemble all the parts for you now this is again an asset or a, let's say a pencil manufacturing company which is going to insert the lead, le leads or paint the outside of the pencil again again an economic resource so anything which is going to help you to make or complete your goods and service that you're going to deliver to the customer any machine any asset which is going to help you to do that is a present economic resource it should be controlled by the entity controlled by the entity as in it should be owned or for a period hired or leased by the company right and this should be as a result of past events what does it mean that is the past event is you buying the asset which is why now you can control the asset or you leasing the asset two years back one year back which gives you the right to now control the asset if it is not your asset you cannot simply use it for economic resource so in the past you should have purchased it hired it rented it etc which gives you today the right to control the asset to use it as an economic resource for the production of goods or services clear examples are office buildings warehouses delivery vans plant and machinery uh, computer equipment office furniture cash inventory etc now there are two different types of assets that we need to understand first is non current assets and second is current assets so what do i mean by non current assets right non current assets are which are going to be used by the entity for a long period of time that is specifically more than one year what do i mean by this land land is generally uh, purchased with an intention to be held for many years or plant and machinery a big heavy uh, machine that you invest in generally more than one year these are called as non current assets which will be depreciated over the period okay if you have not heard of the term depreciation we will discuss it in detail later so no need to worry okay uh, i hope you are up to with oh, with me up to non current assets but if you are talking about current assets these are generally assets which will be realized sold within a period of one year what do we mean by this first example is inventory inventory is basically all the production that is right now in stock which you want to sell to the customer but you've not sold it up to up till now so you're soon get, going to sell it to the customer now inventory generally is sold within a couple of days weeks or months so it is mostly sold within one year which makes it a current item current asset another example is debtors what do debtors mean whenever you sell the goods to a customer some customers may not have the ability to immediately pay you so they request you a period of 60 days 90 days to pay for the goods but as you can hear it 60 days 90 days in short they're going to pay within a period of one year which makes them a current asset so in this way there could be non current assets for the business and current assets for the business the main distinction is non current assets are held for more than one year whereas current assets are realized within one year or 12 months moving on second item in the balance sheet is a liability okay now what is a liability an asset as i explained you is something which is controlled by the entity to make goods and services liability is an obligation for the entity something that they have to pay to someone else simple 
So liability as per the IASP that is Accounting Standards Board is basically an obligation, current obligation that is why present obligation to transfer economic resource as a result of past events. Obligation is a responsibility and you have no absolutely no way to avoid it, right? Let's break it down as well. Present obligation. You have an obligation to pay someone money today, okay? To pay, repay something today. Present obligation. To transfer an economic resource. What does an economic resource mean here? You may be required to be paid in cash. You may be required to be paid in kind. For example, your own goods, etc. So you have to transfer in the way of an economic resource. Either cash or some gold or jewelry or your goods in kind, etc. Why do we have to transfer it? Because of some past event. I'll explain to you with an example. For example, you have purchased a machinery and shown it as a non-current asset. The machinery is for 20 lakhs. You have 10 lakhs with you, 10 lakhs you need to take a loan, right? You go to a bank, the bank gives you a loan, tells you to repay it within three years. What is the past event? You taking the loan. Because you have taken the loan, now you have an obligation to repay that loan in the form of an economic resource. The economic resource being cash, money, correct? So this is how a liability works. Because you took that loan for three years, now you have an obligation for three years to repay that money through cash, which is an economic resource, right? Other examples is uh, if you have purchased raw material on loan, then you need to again repay it, which is called as buying goods on credit, who we show as creditors. Then again, as I explained, if you have taken money through a bank, loan through any lender, bank overdraft, taking money from the bank, but for a shorter duration, and sales tax obligations, etc. Now again, liabilities are bifurcated into two categories. First is a current liability, second is a non-current liability. If you have a liability which is lesser than one year, a liability which you have to repay within 12 months, for example, an overhead, the bank has temporarily lent you money, but the bank tells you that you have to repay within 15 days, right? Less than one year, that sh goes into the current liability category. Or you have purchased raw material on credit, like you give 60 days to your customer, your supplier, your vendor gives you 90 days. For example, 90 days to pay back for the raw material. Again, less than 12 months. So again, a current liability. Whereas, as I told you the example of that bank, 10 lakhs ka loan, you had to repay within three years, more than one year. Hence, that loan became a non-current liability. In this way, you can bifurcate between current liabilities where you have to pay the economic resource money within one year and non-current liabilities where you can pay it more than one year. When it, you need to pay it for multiple years, that becomes a non-current liability. Perfect. Let's go to a quick question. One of the questions which I'm taking is, which of the asset here, which of the following here is an asset according to the definition? Bank overdraft, factory building, payables and amounts owed. As you can see, overdraft tick, just discussed a liability. Payables, that is something you have to pay, said in the meaning itself, again a liability. Amount owed, owed as in you have to pay it to someone. You owe it to someone, again a liability. But factory building is an asset. So the correct answer is B, okay? Now the third part of the balance sheet, which is the capital or equity. What do we mean by capital or equity? The amount that is invested in the business, the amount that is invested in the business by the owner is the capital or equity. Correct. This is a special kind of liability. It is still a liability, so it is shown on the liability side of the balance sheet, but a special kind of liability, right? If it is a company, we call it shares or equity right? What is equity basically? It is a residual interest in the assets of the entity after we remove all the liabilities. So what exactly is equity or capital? Let's break it down. When a business is started, naturally there are some people who believe in that idea of business, 
who think that it's a good idea to produce these goods and services and hence these people come together and intend to start the business but naturally they need money correct they need economic resources to start this business so whatever they have they pool in their money okay let's say there are 10 people they are each able to contribute 5 lakhs so they pool in 50 lakhs why do they need money they need money to buy assets we just saw assets because assets can give you goods and resources they need people to work these assets and to make goods and services so therefore they need to invest money now this money that they are investing in is called as capital or equity of the business right this is the initial money that is invested by the owners of the business to get the business started now they have the residual interest in assets after deducting all the liabilities what do we mean by this now eventually after the business goals are met and the business is decided to be liquidated to be closed down okay now when it is closed down the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to sell off all your assets you're going to sell off your building your machinery your land in the market let's say all these assets get you 90 lakhs perfect now you're going to pay off your liabilities one by one so whatever liabilities are left a bank loan is spending 5 lakh some other loan is spending 20 lakhs you're going to pay off your liabilities okay so you got your assets of 90 lakhs let's say you have to pay off all the other loans 5 lakhs other lenders 20 lakhs etc you're going to pay off 25 lakhs now the question remains what about the rest 65 lakhs the 65 lakhs eventually belong now to the last person remaining which is the owners or in other words the equity holders or the capital holders so like they are the first people to invest in the business they are the last people to get out of the business so whatever is residual left in the business will eventually go to the owners or the cap equity holders of the business right so in this way people who initially believe in the idea and invest their money in the business are called as the capital or equity holders of the business clear let me show you the format of assets and liabilities that is basically the balance sheet according to the textbook as you can see simple first the non current assets plant and machinery second the current assets from here we'll start the current assets inventory as i said the stock which has to be sold to the customer receivables as i said some customers can't pay immediately so you're giving them goods on credit and they will pay you in some time and cash loose cash okay that makes us a total assets capital capital is capital for the last year add the profit for this year what is exactly the profit the net profit that we saw in profit and loss now why will this profit go in capital why would it go in capital so as i explained after all the expenses are being fulfilled okay let's say revenue is 10000 after all the expenses are being fulfilled expenses are of 7000 right so how much money is remaining 3000 which i call is the net profit after all the expenses are being met who does this money belong to this money belongs to the owners of the business thus it is added in the capital let me explain again your revenue is 10000 you have met all the expenses all the expenses total to 7000 you have 3000 remaining now after everybody's needs are fulfilled all the expenses are met whatever money is remaining will go to the owners or the shareholders of the company in other words this is going to be added to your capital the profit of the year add both of these and you will get the balance of the capital the final balance of the capital after capital or equity capital equity same thing after capital or equity you get the liabilities liabilities non current liabilities stretching for more than one year they have shown your bank loan and current liabilities current liabilities are payables that is as i said your vendor has given you goods on credit you have to pay in him in some time it becomes a payable a current liability you get the total of liabilities and capital as you know the balance sheet both sides have to match assets and liabilities 
and that gives you an idea of the balance sheet. Perfect? All right. Now, there was a concept up here which I told you I'll explain after I do the assets and liabilities part. Right. What is exactly the concept? Income is increase in assets or decrease in liabilities. As a result, that increases the equity other than the contributions of equity holders. Now, what exactly does this mean? For example, I have some revenue. Okay. Uh, income is increase in assets. Okay. Now, I have sold goods to a customer. Sold goods to customer worth 20,000 rupees. And the customer has paid in cash. What is the entry do I pass? Do I pass cash account debit to sales? Now, this sales goes to revenue, which goes to profit and loss account. Simple. But this cash will go to asset. So in other words, if my cash balance before this entry was let's say 50,000, because of this entry, my cash balance has increased. It now becomes 70,000. So income results in increase of assets. This is one of the example. Another thing is income results in decrease of liabilities. How is this possible? Now, this 20,000 that you have earned, you can use this to repay a bank loan or a short term loan. So let's say your overdraft, I've just explained to you that overdraft is a short term loan given by a bank. Let's say your overdraft was 25,000. Now you have the sale because of which you have 20,000. Now your overdraft is only 5,000 after repayment. So income also can result to decrease in liabilities, right? So when your income incre asset increases or your liability decreases, eventually your capital will increase. Okay. Second is expenses are decrease in assets and increase in liabilities. What do we mean by these? Expenses are decrease in assets, right? So for example, you take the example of an expense we call as depreciation. What exactly is depreciation? If you have never heard this term, imagine that you have purchased a vehicle, a two-wheeler, correct? You have purchased it in 2019. It's been three, four years now, right? You purchased it, let's say, at 75,000. Do you think if you sell it today, after three, four years, you will get 75,000? No, you won't. You will get a value much lower than 75,000. Why so? because the asset has been depreciated. Its quality has reduced as compared to it being a brand new asset. That is what we call as depreciation. So if we consider depreciation, so if we consider depreciation, basically every year we're going to reduce the value of our non-current assets because they are getting older. The quality is coming down and down every year, right? So whenever there is depreciation, we pass an entry, depreciation account debit to the non-current asset as the non-current asset value is decreasing. Perfect. So depreciation, we record an expense through p and Now, Because it is an expense, it's it is signifying the ad that the asset quality is coming down. So the asset value has to be reduced. So in other words, expenses lead to decrease in the asset value, correct? Another thing that expenses can also lead to is increase in liabilities. What do we mean by these? Okay. Now let's say you want to purchase some raw material. Raw material is basically material required for your product. Okay. So for example, as I told you, a cake, cake ha can have raw material as sugar, eggs. These are raw materials. You want to purchase raw material worth 40,000, but you don't have the cash. So you tell your supplier that I'm going to take a short loan or I'm going to take these goods on credit and I'm going to repay you within two months. Obviously, this becomes a liability for you, right? What is the entry that you pass? Purchases debit to creditor or the vendor. Thus, it being a liability. Now, this is an expense which will go to profit and loss. But because of this expense, you have now created a new liability worth 40,000. In other words, expenses result in increase of liabilities, right? 
I hope you are clear with assets. What do they have the effect on assets and liabilities? Sorry, income. What is the effect that they have on assets and liabilities? And expenses and the effect on assets and liabilities, right? So right now we have covered the income, expenses, asset, liabilities, and the basic meaning of financial accounting and management accounting.